first things first i found this pretty interesting article um online in a particular subreddit i'm not going to tell you which one because there's no point but it, it did just kind of you know bring some thoughts to mind about how you know i kind of came up in my upbringing and stuff and maybe kind of shed some light on maybe why i'm the way i am the way i am but somebody posted this thread basically saying um did anyone notice or was anybody else ignorant of the class divide until they attended university right and they posted they said the following it said they're speaking for myself i grew up in a small working class and largely dying town in north of england like particularly everybody at my local um, substandard comprehensive i left school with um, little in a way of qualifications however i was able to complete some decent qualifications post which allowed me to attend a relatively prestigious university i must say i wish i hadn't bothered not only for the practical reasons uh, that is now I only have a 2.1 degree in a field where the first which nearly all the cohort achieved is the only real path to academia but also because the entire experience was just filled me with genuine bitterness when I first arrived I was a singular person on my dorm floor without university educated parents nearly everyone I met with either privately educated a fact that they were mostly almost never admit outside of their own company or attended a flowery independent or comprehensive school named after some medieval artisan guild where fees were not necessary but a particular postcode was however the emotion i feel most looking back upon the experience as a recent graduate is as a pathetic as it sounds was complete jealousy i'm not particularly jealous of the uh, material wealth of the professional classes if anything i've observed working class people spending more money on clothing and holidays but rather cultural wealth from an early age they knew their path they knew what to do they were supported in it education networking extracurricular activities are clearly valued whereas in my town growing up in school mostly seen as a place where you go you go so your parents can go to work <laughs> yeah i love that line um teachers were generally disliked and seen as un unsympathetic uninspired bureaucrats and petty author authority figures any criticism of the intersection between class and education in the uk has a caricature of eton and harrow toffs to fall back on and no doubt they exist i've met them but generally speaking they're an endangered species and felt no jealousy of them they're awful fashion and weird chins but my observation is ruling classes of the immediate future is the, is this decidedly neoliberal they will read the guardian and take the good game of inclusion sorry and talk the good game of inclusion and breaking barriers but this the, discreetly they will be just as ruthless in defending their privilege as the top hated ones of old for me personally i only noticed the class divide i guess when i started getting involved in the scene mostly i don't think i've noticed it in academia i didn't really i was kind of fortunate and I think it kind of is maybe there is a slight racial element to it because I think when you grow up in a hood where I grew up in a very rough working class background, um, you know, loads of Im immigrants, um, obviously mostly a white area. But again, the community I kind of grew up in, but there's a lot of immigrant community, a lot of Hungarian, Polish, Romanian, um, a few people obviously from Cap Verde um africa of course and whatnot but you know it's very kind of you know and we're all kind of struggling so you kind of band together regardless of what your skin tone is if you've all kind of emigrated or if your parents have all kind of seek asylum in this country and most of your parents can't speak english you just kind of figure it out there might be a couple of fights between you but usually you figure it out because you're all the same you're all struggling you're all struggling to put you know electric on a power key and shit and make sure food's on a table and whatnot so everyone kind of chips in with each other there's always kind of people splitting sandwiches splitting packet of crisps it's really kind of cool and no one really speaks about it it's just kind of yeah i know you're hungry have this and kind of move on with it i mean loads of kind of um preserving people's dignity which i loved and that was obviously a great experience so there was that kind of um because you're going through a miserable experience together you don't really realize it until you step away from it but in terms of um you know what's what's the title said in terms of being seeing the class divide i noticed a class divide when i went to university so obviously i went to central st martin's I studied uh, product design there, right? So it was a really good course, really prestigious course, really prestigious university, well known. And the only reason why I decided to go there in the first place was it's a really dumb story. But essentially, I used to go to this really kind of well regarded sixth form in the area that I lived in for whatever reason. I think, no, I actually went to sixth form. In, instead of going to college because I needed a structure because as you can guess I'm a bit of a wild boy and I was wild when I was young too especially when I was living at home and I felt like I was being controlled so I just lash out when I was outside and I kind of felt like I needed to have some structure even though I was always quite 
I, I did quite well in school. I didn't really struggle to revise. I didn't struggle to read. I was fairly intelligent. Things came to me quite naturally. I was blessing in that regard. I still kind of made stuff hard for myself. I'd still kind of be my own worst kind of enemy. And I think anybody that knows me personally would know that sometimes I do end up, you know, getting in my own way and tripping over myself just because I love to self-sabotage for whatever reason. I'm changing it over time, but it did happen a lot when I was younger. So I picked a sixth form because I wanted that structure of being able to go to certain classes um, five days a week, one hour per class whatever it may be do you know what I mean that kind of regimen structure you get in secondary school but then when I was in there obviously the teachers in there are like just the same as you're in secondary school right it's just a flip of a coin secondary school teachers are really nice or they're cunts and um, yeah I find college teachers are usually they usually treat you a bit more like an adult because you know there's a lot more adults in college as there aren't going to be in sixth form you're not going to bump into like some 45 year old in a sixth form are you most likely you will do in a college so they probably have to temper how they interact with people so the art, I studied art, so I think you know, what I studied in sixth form, I studied art, English literature and graphic design, obviously. So when I did that, my art class, which I was really good at, but again, I didn't apply myself. So, you know, I only blame myself. I kind of drove my, my teachers crazy. And I guess in my class, there was a couple of girls who were, you know, maybe not as talented as I was, but still they put in the work and they were always attentive, pleasure to be around. Like I kind of learned those early lessons, just they put a smile on the teacher's faces, which I definitely didn't do. So they were just went over. So, and because the rest of our classmates also were a bit of a pain in the ass, our teachers. And again, looking back at it, they were fairly young then. We didn't know that because we just thought anybody older than us is flipping 50 years old. But I guess because we were such a pain in the ass, when those girls came in and they were so nice to be around, they would kind of do this thing where they would kind of over praise them in front of us because they wanted us to know that they preferred how they acted vis-a-vis -vis how we acted. But of course, that kind of reaction is only going to get make us to be more obnoxious and more flipping pieces of shits so we kind of gave it back some continually until it got to a point where they just basically started ignoring us and me included um in terms of the bad eggs in the class but then i remember one time um one of the teachers was praising one of the girls in our class we had like a we had like um what they called we had like a ref not a appraisal what they called when you review your work you paint you do your thing and then you come around the circle and they review it and you go through your inspiration you show your work whatever anyway we were kind of appraising ourselves and they're basically giving the feedback on what she, the teacher was giving the feedback on what they what that girl did and what was good and what wasn't and i remember her saying something along the lines of oh you're going to be perfect for your central set minds. You're really going to be perfect. I really recommend you apply for it. And that put a seed in my head. I was like, what the hell is central set minds? And why is she only telling her about it and not everybody else? Then it came the time to kind of apply for places to go. And this girl must have applied to central set minds and got in straight away. And she came to class to tell the teacher. And she was like, oh my God, I'm so happy for you. Well done. She got in, she got in. And I was like, and the teacher was being really like, I wouldn't say snarky, but she was kind of, really rubbing in our faces that this girl got to Central St. Martins, she got in, but we didn't. And because we, the reason why we didn't is because we're pieces of shit, <laughs> which is pretty true. But then I obviously took it as a challenge, like, nah, don't don't try that. Like, I'm talented. I know I'm I'm a fucking, I mean, I'm the Picasso in this class. I can get into that club place too. And I had no idea what Central St. Martins was. I'd never heard of it in my entire life. Um, and then I then just applied bl like blindly and then I went and then I realized, oh, this is why they made such a big deal about it. Because people in there were, you know, really up their own ass. But you could kind of get the sense that this is a really prestigious place to be. And, unf and you know, I was fortunate enough to get in without doing a foundation. Um, I was offered a place in other unis too, like Ken, Loughborough and a few others, which I turned down because I wanted to go to Central Minds because I just wanted to rub it back in that teacher's face. And when I went there, I fucking hated it. <laughs> so it was a pointless, you know what I mean? I did all that just to kind of get back to a teacher who didn't like me in the first place and ended up hating it. But anyway, long story short, there I did notice some class divide, but I didn't notice class divide. I mostly noticed like an addict, like a uh, inadequacy of my of my flipping attitude and my perspective in life because there's a lot of professional people who'd basically go back to Central St. Martin to study a, a class like Central uh, Product Design in order to get that on their CV so they could bump their salary um their it, it could back it could bump up their ability to earn more in flipping in their yeah, in their jobs right so you go there get your get your CV get on your CV that you graduate from Central Martin's Product Design and then use that to obviously um go and apply for jobs that obviously command a higher salary and obviously those guys and girls were coming in and they were they were on it. They were professionals, they were doing their job. I remember there were a couple of Japanese guys that were in my class that were just like so good. Um quite embarrassing for me to kind of show some of my illustrations and sketches because these guys are on they were on another level. Um the kind of people who were like spending their lunch breaks like going over 
drafts going over how to flip in you know make sure they don't have a, a line that stutters and shift like really crazy stuff and i was only doing that on my lunch break or on the way to there onto class you know what i mean just wasn't really focused or anything so that was obviously something that was a great kind of wake up call but again like i said and when i went into the scene i noticed more of the kind of um I noticed more of a divide because the people obviously growing up within the scene everyone kind of does that thing which this person mentioned in this post where they sort of kind of obfuscate or hide or purposely um, with withheld information about you know their background which is understandable because it's none of our business but nothing was really making sense because you'd get you get around these people especially when I get onto the scene at first because I kind of came into it mostly through sneakers right I kind of you know got my start going on crooked tongues forums going on going to you know buy rare sneakers outside of foot patrol and queuing up for days reselling them then going to bape when that was still there the busy workshop on upper james street going to hideout and hating the guys that ran hideout because they were fucking cunts um they didn't like a particular creed of people that went in there then later on decided to suck everyone off that was young because they knew everyone else in there was dying and old but that's a story for another day um but that's where i kind of got my start from and then from there it kind of evolved to doing you know going to dawson going to all those places hanging out and then that obviously evolved to then doing nights and doing parties blah 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 and obviously i noticed the divide there because remember getting to the scene once when you first started and you're hanging out with people going to warehouse raves and then suddenly the guy that you were talking to in the toilets or doing bumps with or whatever is suddenly now opening or launching this online streaming platform called boiler room and you're like huh aren't you like aren't, aren't you like the similar age as me uh, or a couple of years older like i don't understand this how are you able to launch boiler room when we're just in the toilets the other day doing bumps of flipping methadrone that makes no sense okay cool he does it next minute yes some other person oh he's launched some brand this other person's opened a bar you're like how is this possible we were both like you know trying to trying to split a flipping you know uh, a pack of flipping k ciders and now suddenly these people are opening pubs and bars and restaurants it didn't really even make sense and you'd always feel inadequate because you're like i'm just trying to get a job first i'm still try i'm still doing that thing that everyone was doing in the scene where you're trying to beg a position at nike or you're trying to get a job at supreme and all that sort of stuff right and you think that's the fucking mecca obviously there were still good jobs but still you you're really holding those things up to a high pedestal then you when you meet people that work there you realize oh they're just like you and i they're just just a job it's not as flipping hallowed and holy grail as it kind of meant it to be and usually the way to kind of get those jobs really in the in the, in the actual pr practical way to get those jobs actually is to just have a career doing stuff like actually doing things like showing that you are actually competent and then you can use that to maybe leverage then you can maybe leverage some of your relationships to maybe get those roles before but when we were coming up it was all like oh network go to this art gallery exhibition go to this open get, yeah open view um go to this launch whatever it may be and it may be rub shoulders right people and then you never know you could bump into whatever and you can get a job which is funny though because i did meet james jebbia once and said kind of you know how, how i kind of gave him some really cringy praise about how important supreme was to me at the time i think i might have met him i think i was like 21 or something he came into a store i was working at with somebody else i forgot i think he might have been i think he might have come into a store with michael copperman from gimme five and they stopped by and i remember just saying to him hey man supreme's really amazing he introduced me to the smiths and all the, you know really cringy stuff and he was like yeah thanks i appreciate it and he kept moving really seemed like a nice dude way nicer than the guys in london they were absolute cunts like they were all cunts all of them were cunts uh without exception especially the older dude especially the gimme five lot like oh the gimme five lot the ones that hide out the og crew that were there like not the kids that they hired after because they wanted to diversify because everyone there's a thing about hideout everyone hated their customer service because they were all cunts and then they got such a bad reputation it felt like to me i don't know if that's true they, they kind of decided to get the young blood in there to basically try to save the dying store that was obviously hemorrhaging money because no one was buying something because the people in there were cunts but it was too late and then you know they ended up having to close I'm not sure if they closed because of the sales or because of the rent was high who knows i'm just talking about my ass but that aside i noticed um obviously that the class divide there because i was thinking these people were all hanging out with each other they all launching businesses then later on when you get a bit older you start to realize oh these people came from money they got the support that allowed them to do x y and z which was cool but i never also felt inadequate i just think it was just one of those challenges in life you kind of had to level up in and i think maybe because of my background maybe because of where i've grown up you're always kind of you're kind of always at some sort of disadvantage but you don't really you don't really dwell on it too much because there's no other route out besides working hard 
so you can't dwell and if you sit still you're not going to be able to help out your family you're not going to, be able to help out your brothers or be inspiration to people around you you kind of have to do right by the people that kind of risked everything to bring you over here in the first place so you don't really have time to wallow in oh i don't feel inadequate oh i don't i don't have this reference oh i don't know who joan didian is no you just have to get wise up to it that's why i'm so thankful that when i was in sixth form i started to buy weirdly enough i started to buy the sunday times like religiously all the time i'd buy it and then from the Sunday Times is actually where I got my um, interest in fashion because I used to read the pull out there called Style, but it, it was really good that time. And that's when I kind of started to understand more about the scene. I'm starting to understand more about the club scene, Soho, uh, the arts, whatnot, through that magazine, through the paper, just kind of getting a bit more culturally aware. And then obviously immersing myself in documentaries, watching random stuff and just kind of being curious and digging deep into things. But obviously that I was starting from some disadvantage because there were kids that were coming up that was, I was living in a scene whose parents, you know, took them to Glastonbury when they were 12 or when they were one years old those kind of kids in terms of their cultural education it's really difficult to keep up with them because their parents have been like going to Burning Man since they were 16 and they've been you know they've been kind of um they've kind of absorbed all this amazing cultural knowledge just through osmosis just from being around even if they're not interested they're just going to be a little bit sharper than you are which is understandable um but again I don't think it's a thing to feel inadequate about and um the only thing I felt slightly inadequate about growing up might have been money because obviously I grew up poor so most of my friends around me also grew up poor so that was the only thing that you kind of felt inadequate about and I remember there being uh, you realize that quite quickly when who was poor and who was rich because of the houses you went to when you went to go stay somewhere's house after school you know all their pillows were the same <laughs> were the same color um the settees weren't ripped up um the tvs looked like they came out of the shop yesterday um i don't know the floor colors the foot the carpets on the floor were all the same color they might have had carpet on the stairs wood floor whatever crazy little stuff that you don't really have in your house you're like oh we don't have curtains we have just sheets and you're like, oh, okay cool they're rich okay <laughs> so, i mean it, but again it's not rich it's just you know they just have their parents just had decent jobs so they're able to kind of you know spare a couple of grand or a couple of hundred on some home improvements here and there which we didn't have because we just had to make sure you had food on the table but again even that it wasn't anything to dwell on you just had to get up and kind of dust yourself off and try to make something of yourself to justify and to kind of pay back your parents for risking everything to bring you over here there really was no time to dwell i don't know maybe it's just maybe i'm kind of compartmentalizing and doing that thing that guys do where you just bury your flipping trauma but i think that's why i did i honestly do think that's why i did but you know maybe i don't know but let me know down below if you have a similar experience or if you have a different experience or when did you notice a clear class divide when you were growing up was was it when you went to school was it when you got your first job um was it when you went to work in a particular industry was it when you when we went first traveling i remember when i went traveling actually i noticed that people were really this is when i went traveling to nicaragua and many people i bumped into who are really shy or really hesitant to tell you how they're doing it or how they're affording it and of course most of them were trust fund babies but the majority of them were also very early on the whole like remote working thing like customer service and you know social media managing like from like bali and like indonesia and stuff and they were just like really they were smart about keeping it to themselves because they knew if they told anybody that floodgates were open because who wouldn't want to be a social media manager living in flipping you know guadalajara who wouldn't be a social manager living in flipping bali and you know ubud and stuff who wouldn't want to do that like come on it's a flipping dream job so they were smart to keep it to themselves but yeah if you had a similar experience let me know in the comments i'd love to know not to know what you have to say about that i really would